Welcome back to the Bitcoin Layer. I'm Joe Consorti. Now, following Saturday's tragic attempted assassination of Donald Trump, which claimed the lives of one individual and injured two, and our thoughts and prayers go out to them, Bitcoin has had quite the reaction. So you can see here that immediately following the events, when Donald Trump's presidential odds soared by 10 points, Bitcoin also rose in tandem with it. Now, that's no surprise. If you've been following the Bitcoin layer uh, for any period of time, we have done our fair share of analysis on the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. Now, of course, we are a Bitcoin and global macro research firm. But by the same token, uh, these are macro events. These are market moving events. Uh, and as demonstrated by the price action in not just Bitcoin, which was the only market open at the time, but the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ since Monday, you can clearly see who markets uh, are looking at um, and favoring for a presidential ticket and what president would be more favorable for markets, judging by the way that markets reacted. Of course, Bitcoin is quite the market because it is open on the weekend. It is open during these times when market events don't happen during the 9.30 to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday, excluding holidays, hours of traditional markets. It's open 24 7 365 for the good and the bad. And of course, when Trump's election odds uh, soared following the attempt on his life on Saturday, Bitcoin rose in tandem. It was the only asset doing it. But since then, we've clearly seen Bitcoin trades with risk. And so other risk assets have moved up as well. But it's not just because Trump would be a better candidate for the risk asset bucket broadly because he would be more favorable to businesses. Um, Obviously, he did that during his four-year tenure, making it easier for companies uh, to do business, and therefore investors are very, very inclined uh, toward a Trump presidency versus another four years of uh, current President Joe Biden. But he's also positive about Bitcoin in its own right. He has illustrated that he wants to make the United States a powerhouse for Bitcoin. And in today's video, we're going to be walking through this price action that we saw with Bitcoin and uh, Donald Trump's election odds and actually exploring the assets that Donald Trump owns when it comes to Bitcoin. But unfortunately, with Trump, it's mostly crypto uh, and his new running mate that he announced, uh, VP J.D. Vance, who is a protege of Peter Thiel and uh, quite frankly, is a Bitcoiner. It is very safe to say that this Bitcoin ticket, that this presidential ticket, sorry for the slip of tongue, but it's very true. This presidential ticket is a Bitcoin presidential ticket. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive straight into it. First things first, uh, the price action. So as I just mentioned, um, here is the price of Bitcoin in the top pane and Donald Trump's election odds in the bottom pane. Now you can see, I'll actually move this legend so you can see it a little bit better, but Trump's election odds rose from 57% I'll X out of here from 57% all the way up to uh, 68% following the attempt on his life on Saturday. And uh, that exact same time, Bitcoin's price, and we'll move this over here, rose by about two and a half percent, a little bit tough to see. But in, in the days since, as Trump's election odds have held steady at 68%, uh, you can see Bitcoin has risen 12%. Right. As uh, Vice President Kamala Harris has said, uh, what can be unburdened by what has been. Uh, what has been has been a pretty tumultuous uh, kind of choppy several weeks for Bitcoin, choppy downward price action for Bitcoin that nobody really likes. Nobody has enjoyed seeing this. But uh, following what happened on Saturday, we've seen such a swift reversal in Bitcoin's price. And of course, it's not only to do with what occurred with Trump's election odds soaring. Uh, it's also to do with a lot of these native factors that have been headwinds for Bitcoin turning into tailwinds. If you want to know that, uh, you can check out the last video that we uploaded. I'll have it linked up on here in the top right. So you can have a link to that where I discussed all of the factors that are now in Bitcoin's favor. I'll, I'll walk through them very briefly for those of you who may not have seen it. So Mt. Gox has begun redistributing its 94,500 Bitcoin to creditors who, of course, uh, lost their Bitcoin when Mt. Gox was hacked and that Bitcoin was seized. Only a small amount was able to be recovered, but those investors have, uh, are, a lot of them are now multimillionaires, if not billionaires. And so um, a lot of them, rather than selling their Bitcoin, chances are, I mean, a great deal of them will sell it, but chances are, given that they are early tech adopters, kind of the people who were buying Bitcoin initially, they're more convicted than you might think. And so rather than flipping them into US dollars, chances are a lot of them are just going to hold on to their Bitcoin uh, as they have been doing for the better part of 11 years. And that's kind of what we've seen. So all of the selling pressure from this distribution beginning um, clearly hasn't had too material of an impact on Bitcoin's price. It's now up uh, nearly $10,000 from its lows over the last uh, two weeks. Also, the German government sold $21, uh, 21 billion dollars in Bitcoin over the weekend. It sold all 50 billion of its 50 billion dollars in Bitcoin that it owned. Um, and even still, 
we managed to springboard off of the low $50,000 level. So that's a quick recap of last video. If you want all the details, go check it out. But factors that have been headwinds for Bitcoin over the last month are no longer hurting its market price. Um, and after this huge drop that we experienced, uh, which uh, it was a 7.5% weekly drop last week, ETF inflows picked right back up. We've seen almost a billion dollars in net inflows over the last uh, 10 to 12 days. Uh, it's clear that Bitcoin may have set a local bottom for the remainder of the bull market. And what happened with Trump the other day is further confirmation that uh, the market not only likes the direction that the U.S. election is headed in, but it also believes uh, that the bottom is set. It clearly has set the bottom. Buyers have stepped in. Uh, and we believe that uh, this very well could be the local bottom uh, for the remainder of the bull market. That's exactly what price action, action suggests. And this is a preview of what we're going to witness uh, as we approach the November election. This is a preview of how Bitcoin is going to react and risk assets more broadly. Um, obviously, having Donald Trump as a president, he is a businessman. He was able to create one of the most favorable environments during my lifetime for businesses to operate in the United States. The stock market loves that, and investors are buying stocks in anticipation of that. Uh, you know, in confluence with Donald Trump's election odds rising from 58% to 68%. Um, so that is the correlation between Bitcoin and Trump's election odds, why it's happening, why you saw that pop, and why Bitcoin is up 12% over the last several days. Not just to do with Trump, but Trump certainly plays a factor. The Bitcoin layer is proud to be sponsored by Unchained, the leader in Bitcoin financial services. Unchained empowers you to take full control over your Bitcoin with a collaborative multi-sig vault when you hold two of three keys and benefit from a Bitcoin security partner. Purchase Bitcoin directly into your cold storage and eliminate exchange risks using Unchained's trading desk. Unchained also offers the best IRA product in the industry, allowing you to easily roll over old 401ks or IRAs into Bitcoin while keeping control of your keys. Don't pay more taxes than you have to. Talk to them today and visit unchained.com slash TBL and use code TBL for $100 off when you create an account. So let's go into exactly more of the details behind why a Trump JD Vance ticket would be so favorable for Bitcoin. First things first, we're going to go through all of the positive things that Donald Trump has said about Bitcoin and what he would do with Bitcoin policy in the United States over the last six months. So number one, and there are subsections within this, he announced his support for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency more broadly. He said, I am very positive and open-minded to cryptocurrency companies and all things related to this new and burgeoning industry. Our country must be the leader in the field. There is no second place. So this is a huge switch, largely attributed to Vivek Ramaswamy, who is now a part of his campaign. If you'll recall, Donald Trump said at a few occasions uh, in the past, uh, in years past when he was president and while he was running, that he views Bitcoin as volatile and all these other things. But he's clearly changed his tune. He wants the U.S. to be a powerhouse for Bitcoin. That's why Bitcoin loves it when his election odds go up. Uh, the other thing that he said, there are several things. We'll go through all of them. He talked about Bitcoin mining and energy dominance. Um, uh, a lot of what we've talked about here uh, at the Bitcoin layer with several of the yes that we have had on the show. Uh, so it says Trump has voiced strong support for domestic Bitcoin mining, linking it to energy dominance. He stated, we want all the remaining Bitcoin to be made in the U.S. Of course, that's an impossible thing. But what he's trying to highlight here is the strategic importance of Bitcoin mining for the country's energy sector and technological advancement. So Trump not just talking about Bitcoin, the asset, but Bitcoin mining. And as it relates to energy independence, it directly ties into what Trump has been talking about since his 2016 campaign. He's been very on board with energy independence. Actually, when Monday opened up, oil and gas stocks rose and alternative energy stocks and the, the entire uh, segment, the entire industry of alternative energy went down. So as the market prices in a Trump presidency as well, they're pricing in the fact that he's always been pro-energy and pro-energy independence. That's what Bitcoin mining allows for. Bitcoin mining is the apex technology for energy independence because it allows energy at any area of the United States to be monetized right there. It doesn't have to be taken out and transported. You could set up a Bitcoin mining location directly where the energy is, and it could be for wasted energy too. We have seen several companies um, uh, be able to harness this stranded energy it's called and then turn it monetize it right then and there and so that'll allow the united states to leverage more of its natural resources in order to monetize it in order to grow and strengthen the u.s economy so trump talking about bitcoin mining uh 
strengthening the United States energy independence uh, and in strengthening our energy independence, driving more mining to the United States. Um, this is another very positive thing that Trump has said about Bitcoin. Um, the other thing that he said as it pertains to uh, Bitcoin here in the United States is he advocated for a pro-Bitcoin administration. At a campaign fundraising event, Trump positioned himself as the crypto president. A lot of you will remember this. There was a clip um, uh, from a fundraiser in Miami. It was a, a specifically, I believe, a crypto uh, fundraiser. And Trump pledged support for U.S. Bitcoin miners, and he contrasted his stance that's a very polite way of saying it. With the Biden administration's policies, he criticized Biden, claiming that under his administration, Bitcoin would face significant regulatory hurdles and potentially be stifled, which it has. I mean, Liz Warren and gang have been on a uh, a holy war against Bitcoin and crypto, uh, notably Elizabeth Warren. And we've talked about this at the Bitcoin layer, uh, my own state senator, unfortunately. She talked about how she's building an anti-crypto army and Trump very clearly states that he is going to build an administration that runs counter uh, to that and actually foster the most competitive regulatory environment for Bitcoin globally to drive more of that here. He recognizes it, recognizes it as a burgeoning industry, uh, again, thanks to people like Vivek Ramaswamy, and now his VP candidate, J.D. Vance, which we'll talk about in just a second here. A couple other things Trump has said about Bitcoin. He said he's talked about self-custody rights. He said that he will support the right to self-custody for the nation's 50 million crypto holders. I say this, I will keep Elizabeth Warren and her goons away from your Bitcoin, and I will never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency. Yet another very positive development from Mr. Trump talking specifically about self-custody. OK, so this is mind boggling. Tell this to somebody five, 10 years ago that, hey, uh, President Trump, when he's campaigning for his second non-consecutive term, is going to be talking about defending the right to self-custody. It would blow people's heads clean off uh, <laughs> saying that, right? Very positive development. He wants people to use Bitcoin the way it was intended. So the third thing he has said about Bitcoin is that he wants to take campaign donations in Bitcoin. Obviously, he began accepting Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency. Uh, he was the uh, second uh, candidate to do so following RFK Jr. And the final thing he has said uh, as it pertains to Bitcoin uh, more broadly is that if you vote for me on day one, I will commute Ross Ulbricht's sentence to time served. He's already served 11 years and we're going to get him home. Uh, obviously, Ross Ulbricht, the founder of the Silk Road, while we don't uh, have an opinion on that here at the Bitcoin layer, uh, what this is is yet another very positive development as it pertains to uh, crypto more broadly. So his candidate, his running mate, as if as if all of that was was good enough, right? His running mate is avowedly pro-Bitcoin and arguably even more so uh, than Trump himself. Here's one thing that J.D. Vance said back in 2022. He said, this is why crypto is taking off. The regime will cut off your banking access uh, if you have the wrong politics. Of course, this is in response to uh, Canada's deputy prime minister when she talked about freezing and suspending bank accounts. Obviously, Bitcoin allows you to operate without a bank account. People move into Bitcoin um, because of that counterparty risk that's associated. The government can just freeze and seize your assets out on a whim. And J.D. Vance recognizes that. Uh, one of the major use cases for Bitcoin and crypto more broadly is that you can absolve yourself of all counterparty risk. You do not need a bank. You can be your own bank. And this isn't just all talk. J.D. Vance is actually putting his money where his mouth is when it comes to uh, talking positively about Bitcoin. Here's the uh, annual report calendar. Uh, the United States Senate and Congress, are they need to have financial disclosures of all the assets that they own and all the trades that they make. Uh, this is as of 2022, uh, December 2022. Um, and if you search BTC, you could see that it's actually his second largest holding. Um, among some of his largest holdings here uh, are actually things like Walmart stock. He owns a lot of Walmart stock between fifty and hundred thousand dollars in Walmart stock. He owns between fifty and hundred thousand um, dollars in the stock OILK um, oil, right? And between hundred thousand dollars and two hundred fifty thousand dollars in Bitcoin held at Coinbase. That's not to mention other paper Bitcoin proxies that that JD does hold, and it's speculated that he holds. But as of twenty twenty two, we know that he holds somewhere between hundred thousand dollars and two hundred fifty thousand dollars in Bitcoin held at Coinbase. He also owns gold, somewhere between $100,000 and $250,000. Uh, he owns $150,000 to $250,000 in TLT, in treasury bonds. And he also owns uh, things like Rumble, uh, the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, um, and of course, a great deal of cash in his Robinhood account, checking account, uh, um, Charles Schwab account, etc. 
But clearly, J.D. Vance is putting his money where his mouth is when it comes to being a pro-Bitcoin candidate. And it doesn't just end there. In 2023, uh, Vance introduced a bill that would protect crypto firms and exchanges from being cut off by traditional banks. Again, he drafts legislation based off of the things that he's saying. So clearly, we know that he's going to be an active Bitcoin supporting vice president, which is very good. Um, and he drafted legislation for another industry-friendly bill uh, that's currently circulating. And in 2021, um, and J.D. Vance comes from a venture capitalist background. He's a protege of Peter Thiel. And he actually had his own venture capital firm called Naria Capital Fund. Uh, and of course, this is very encouraging. Somebody coming from the VC world who's very into Bitcoin. Um, but uh, he issued a statement in 2021 opposing an amendment to uh, the infrastructure bill that he claimed would amount to a backdoor ban of Bitcoin. And he added, our tech sector used to be defined by innovative upstarts and is now dominated by boring monopolists. The crypto community has stood in stark contrast to this shift. It is one of the few sectors of our economy where conservatives and other free thinkers can operate without pressure. So clearly, Trump picked a candidate that aligns very, very closely, not just with his own values, but with the values of Bitcoin. OK, Trump has pitched himself as the Bitcoin candidate this campaign. Um, you know, which he obviously previously dismissed. But now the former president is picking as his running mate someone who is just as, if not more, avowedly pro-Bitcoin than him. And we can see that not only in where he has put his money, but also where he is uh, conducting his policy. Of course, the president is going to speak next month at Bitcoin, excuse me, not next month, two weeks from now, actually next week at Bitcoin 2024. Uh, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be live for that. And maybe just maybe he'll bring JD Vance along with him. Uh, and the last thing we'll take a look at is Donald Trump's own holdings, which unfortunately are not nearly as Bitcoin oriented as we would like to see. There's actually a lot of, uh, pardon my French, shit coins in here, the cryptocurrency stuff. You can see here, this is a dashboard created by Arkham Intelligence for Donald Trump's uh, public wallets, at least the ones that we know of. Um, and uh, you can see a lot of stuff on Ethereum, Polygon, all this other stuff. So He's pro crypto more broadly. Of course, Bitcoin is currently bundled into that bucket. Uh, but we here at the Bitcoin layer believe that all of this stuff is uh, is not worthwhile. But so long as we have a president that is conducting his policy to make the United States a powerhouse uh, for crypto, uh, Bitcoin gets uh, dragged up alongside that. And we know that J.D. Vance, as a venture capitalist, is someone who distinguishes Bitcoin and crypto in his language. And Trump has done that as well. We know that these politicians are. Uh, can at the very least delineate between the two uh, and thus conduct policy in a different manner between the two. And we also know that the market is already ascribed more value to Bitcoin than anything else. And over time, we believe as real interest rates remain positive, uh, all of this kind of uh, misallocated capital, all of these products of zero interest rates, which is a lot of what crypto is, uh, are going to become completely worthless while Bitcoin um, will uh, be here to stay. So that's everything for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we appreciate it as usual. And of course, another reminder, we are a completely apolitical outlet, but we do recognize that one candidate is pro-Bitcoin and the other is not. And so um, we, <laughs> we advise you uh, to make your decision come November accordingly, uh, should you be on this same Bitcoin-oriented mission to take it uh, to an asset that is at the base layer of global financial markets uh, with us. Thank you very much. As per usual, visit thebitcoinlayer.com. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, Hit like on this video, share it if you found it valuable, and uh, of course, tell all your friends about it. Turn on notifications so you'll be notified when we upload a new video. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy.